Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. Why? Because we're talking about aquascapes today, that's why. So, I uh, got a few new subs that I want to shout out to. Anthony, Mark, Sergio, Michelle, Trina, Vix. Hey, welcome. Glad you joined us. None of you said anything or commented, but that's okay. I'm saying hi to you anyway. Uh, so, today is going to be awesome because I'm rescaping my pea puffer tank because it was it just became a disaster. Uh, and I made a scape that's extremely beginner friendly, very easy. And I wanted to show, you know, what you could shoot for when you start off first. Your, your tank doesn't need to look like this or look like that in order to be a great aquascape. If you like the way it looks and it's got plants in there, it's a great aquascape, okay? Um, and I remind my kids that too. The only opinion that matters when it comes to your aquascape is your own, okay? So, if, I mean, if you're not happy, you can change things. Add more plants, take plants away, you know, however you want to do it. Uh, so, pea puffers, uh, one thing that I really love about them um, is their wide range of uh, parameters. They are extremely a beginner friendly uh, fish. Uh, temperature 74 to 82, pH 6.5 to 8, massive. Uh, general hardness and carbonate hardness uh, 3 to 3 to 20 degrees of hardness. So just just huge. Soft, hard water, you know, they, it, they don't mind as long as you're, you know, and within range of their temperature that they like. Um, super easy to take care of. And uh, I'm going to, if you can't find pea puffers in your area, there is a company that will ship them to you. Uh, and no, they're, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. Uh, I'll leave a link to them. I, you know, I want to help you out. I want, I want people to get pea puffers in their house. Uh, they're called Shrimpy Business. And um, they sell, it's all online. They sell Neo Caradinas, Caradinas, and uh, Nano Fish. And one of those Nano Fish are pea puffers. So if you can't find any in any local fish stores, they've got great prices on Nano Fish. And pea puffers are one of them. You can buy them by one, you can buy them in a pack of five, buy them in a pack of ten, however many you want. I'll leave a link uh, in the description too that'll help you get to them. This is what their company logo looks like. And then we're also going to be talking about how you can lower your pH without using driftwood or, uh, you know, fancy chemicals, you know, pH down and all that stuff. <laughs> I have no idea why I just tossed that in there, but I did. Anyway, uh, so we're going to cut. Oh, by the way, any of the products that I, I mentioned today, I'll also leave links to in the description. Um, this is just to help you out. Again, no, I'm not sponsored by anyone. This is just to make things easy for, for you. All right, so here's the before. Here they are. What's in store for us, human? Oh, well, I don't know. You guys keep screwing up this tank, so I'm going to have to redo it. So for a few hours, today's not going to be lovely for you two dudes. Uh, so as you can see, it's just a mess. Uh <laughs> because they dig down into the dirt at night and kick everything up. Um, it makes everything just dirty. Um, and this was this is a dirted tank that I capped with sand, but because they keep digging down, they release the sand up, I mean the dirt up above the sand, and you know, you can see there's dirt everywhere. I mean, there's even Dragonstone you can't see. They got completely buried under all of this dirt, uh, you know, because of what they do. And this Dragonstone is huge. So, to get this going, every plant needs to be removed. I'm gonna have to up. I'm gonna get rid of all the rooted plants, and we're gonna redo all this. So I'm gonna cut this short right now. Clean this out. Pull out all these plants. Probably some propagating. And these dudes are gonna be sitting in a bucket for a few hours. Now, when I've cleaned this out and put it back, we'll talk about what we're gonna put in there to replace all of this dirt and what kind of plants we're gonna use since rooted plants just aren't aren't working here, obviously. All right, so I found something cool. This is my first time to rescape a tank that I had dirt in there. I want to show you what I found. Oh. 
Now this is just one. There's about a half a dozen in there. It's an earthworm. Now, uh, I didn't put those in there. This is, these are just animals that just form whenever you use dirt. Now, this is a positive thing because worms uh, process a lot of waste. Not only that, they keep your soil uh, rotating, uh, which is fantastic for uh, eliminating any uh, anaerobic uh, gas pockets from building and exploding into your tank. Like I said, I started off with dried out uh, organic soil and life just started happening. Um, that's the only wild animal I found in there um, that just happened. So, cool. Water and light. Uh, I'm pretty sure that makes me God! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want to scare you guys. Boop. All right. So I just got done dealing with this tank, getting all the crud out of there. See? What made it even more difficult is I forgot, uh, like nine months ago or whatever, when I was putting this tank together for these pee puffers, I freaking wood glued and liquid nail glued this tank to the nightstand. Yes, I'm using a nightstand to hold up this tank. Why? Well, because I'm a guy, I never use my nightstand for anything. So I brought it down here to the basement and did it. Hold on. Let me wipe my face. Oh gosh. All right. So what I'm going to do to accommodate these fish, since they like to dig down into the sand and dirt, is I'm not going to do dirt at all. All right. I'm going to use blasting sand. Now I got this blasting sand. It's $8.99. 50 pounds of it uh, at my local store. Any kind of blasting sand is fine. Now I'm going to show you a picture because um, companies like uh, Aquion, uh, Imaginarium, and, and Fluval have uh, caught wind that people are buying blasting sand because it's so cheap to use in their aquarium. So they've started selling uh, blasting sand and it says aquarium black diamond blasting sand. Boom! Here's a picture of it. Now look at that. It's uh, 20 pounds, I think I remember. See, I have to throw these pictures up later. Anyway, it's 22 bucks for like 20 pounds or less. Okay, now let me show you just a picture in general of your average blasting sand. Boom! Okay? 10.99, 11.99, mine was 8.99 for 50 pounds. All right, so don't get duped by the aquarium companies that are trying to force you to spend two to three times as much for products you can get at your hardware store. Now I'm going to rinse off this uh, blasting sand, get it in here, and then when I'm putting the filter together, we'll talk about how you can get soft water without using uh, driftwood or using products like pH down. This stuff's no good. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let me get this going and we'll go from there. Uno momento, por favor. Put my sand here in the bucket, and um, I'm just rinsing it off to get the dust and whatnot off of there. Um, I did go with white uh, blasting sand this time. Um, I haven't used it before, and I wanted to see what it would look like, because I usually use black blasting sand, which is great, but we'll just see. We'll see what it looks like. I have heard that, though, using white sand, um, it makes our excrement, you know, kind of pop out. Uh, I guess we'll just see, you know, if that's the case. I will have to do more water changes because I'm not going to have any rooted plants in here, but rhizome plants. And actually, this isn't that du that dusty. Um, it is um, crystalline silica or quartz, which is perfectly safe for fish and whatnot. And it uh, doesn't seem to be very dusty at all. Anyway, so I'm going to get... I don't need very much because I'm not putting any plants in here, so probably slightly above here and over there near the drain are all the rocks that were buried and see this is where the lovely part comes in where I do all my aquascaping in the basement because everything can just get dumped on the concrete floor and down the drain nice all right I'll get back to you when I get the sand in there all right welcome back so I've got my sand in there uh, and the heater and the filter everything's in there except for plants uh, so we're going to talk about how to lower your pH for acidic water 
uh, without having to use driftwood or using uh, chemicals like, you know, pH, pH down. It's not necessary. Uh, so I got this. It's a uh, Fluval Aquatic Peat. Now, you don't have to buy Fluval's product. You can buy uh, peat pellets from a hardware store, of course. But I got this. It wasn't that expensive. It was eight bucks uh, for like a half a pound of it or whatever. You don't need very much. Um, and the way you use this, this is another reason why I like hang on the back filters, you know, because I can modify it. If I was using a sponge filter, you can't do this because it's specifically meant to go into a mesh bag and into your HOB filter. Uh, so for a 10 gallon, you don't need that much. Now, whenever I get stuff like this, I do go online to read comments from people, you know, to see what they have to say about it. Now, this is just peat. It's just granulated peat moss. And I saw a lot of people complaining about, well, I put it in there and the pH isn't lowered. Well, okay, when you're using peat moss, peat granules, peat pellets, or driftwood, those types of stuff that release tannins don't work instantly. They don't work in a couple hours. They don't work overnight. They don't work in a week. It, it can take a couple weeks before it's actually made the water uh, acidic, okay? Um, so don't panic if you put it in and you're like, oh my gosh, my pH is still 7.2 and I want it around 6.5. In general, I say it's a safe thing to make almost every uh, tank that you use, if it's tropical fish or shrimp, to make it uh, slightly acidic, okay? T tannins are wonderful. They uh, help destroy viruses. They make the water a little bit murky, which makes the fish more comfortable. And in general, it makes your fish way more healthy um, when you use it. Now, how much to, to use? I can't tell you that. You know, you put some in there, don't overdo it. I'm going to put a couple spoonfuls in here. I used a half a bag on this in my 40 gallon, and that keeps my uh, pH at 6.7. Um, and that's after using purified water. Um, and there are a couple uh, logs in there. Now, this stuff lasts a long time. Uh, the way you can tell when it's not doing its thing anymore is when you're doing your regular testing of your water and you notice the pH has gone up. Or simply if the water starts to turn clear, it's not releasing tannins anymore. Uh, so I'll take this out. And it looks like, you know, dirt. I'm going to take a couple. Oh, and... By the way, the reason I don't have to cycle this tank uh, before I put you know f the fish back in there, when you're cleaning your tank, um, don't use soap or you know or anything. Just just water. All right, everything that had bacteria on it, I'm putting back in there. So the uh, the dragonstone covered in bacteria. The glass also is covered in bacteria. The filter, I did nothing. I just took it off. And then when I redid this, I put the filter back in there. So your beneficial bacteria, the majority of it is stuck to objects. It's not floating loosely in the water. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to take a bunch of plants from other tanks and put that in there. And um, if you did it correctly without killing anything, because don't, don't use piping hot water either. That'll kill all your bacteria also. You know, just regular room temperature water. I'm going to put some of these peach granules. All right. From above, down below. Now, it's been taking them hours. The whole day was just really traumatizing for them. Um, they immediately, when I, I drip acclimated them, by the way, which I do now, not just with shrimp, I do with fish. Uh, it was a whole day of terror for them but they're right now if you're wondering what they're doing they can see their own reflection so they're poking at themselves uh, but for the first couple hours I had them in here they wouldn't even come out so here we are very uh, simple planted tank I loaded it up with just a bunch of floaters and uh, so we got some uh, dragonstone uh, three of them these were all in the tank before believe it or not they were just completely buried because he had kicked up all the dirt uh, spider wood I pulled from another tank and uh, so what these uh, these are Nubius they're uh, Nubius congenus so I've got three of them on here 
It's a very, very simple uh, setup here and one they can't, you know, destroy and make all dirty like it was before. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And like always, if you're down in the dumps, you're having a bad day, get up and do something about it. Hey, like, share, subscribe, you know, those types of things. Doesn't cost anything, or don't. We'll catch you next time.